Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Audible Farm Podcast. I'm your host. My name is Peter Stockdale. This week, I'm sitting down with Eli Dykstra. That's right. Um, Well, sort of. I'm not sitting down with him. We got in contact over the phone, and we recorded each other's audio and uh, sent it, and um, I meshed it together, and there's a little bit of, uh, well, I think what the deal was, it was I was I was so loud in Eli's headphones that his amazingly awesome microphone picked up uh, some of my back chat. So there's, uh, occasionally you will hear uh, some out-of-sync voicing for me, and that's just due to the fact that there's um, a little bit of lag sometimes in the internet because we were, we were talking over the internet, not directly over the phone. So, uh, that's just kind of how it goes for this episode. I'm sorry if it's the audio quality is not, not the best. It's just what happens, uh, sometimes. So technical difficulties, we'll say it's my fault. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, this is episode number 31 with the amazingly talented Eli Dykstra. It's the Audible Farm Podcast with your host, Peter Stockdale. Sitting up today with Eli Dykstra. I've actually been waiting for this one for quite a while, man. I've <laughs> been a fan cool. of what you've been doing for a long time. That's cool. Um, you know... I've I've been following you around a little bit. I remember you I remember hearing your voice and you were Eli Dykstra, the 15-year-old guitar player from Iowa. Yeah. And then I remember you it was the 16-year-old guitar player from Iowa. Yeah. And and it was kind of your moniker, but what the best part about all this I think it was was the fact that your talent level exceeded anything that anybody probably could have thought at the time because you're not just some kid up there playing. Right. So, right. So so, like, what what drives you to be the person that you are playing as intricate music as you are while still being so young, I guess, would be my biggest question to you. Because, I mean, right now you're only 17. Your talent level eclipses mine <laughs> by quite a bit. But <laughs> it's you. just one of those things. Like, where did you start? Um, well, I kind of, I actually, I always say I got started from actually Guitar Hero. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what first really, like, like influenced me, I would say, into picking up the guitar and playing it. I always wanted to yeah. play guitar before, before like, the age of nine and everything. Like, I was obsessed with it. But uh, getting gu- Guitar Hero the game, I think that really just kind of just drove it home for me where I was like, I am playing a guitar and beating all my idols like Zach Wilde and yeah stuff like that. So I think that's kind of really what what started that for me and as far as uh keeping myself driven honestly i think music is really what just keeps me going because just I, uh like your own music or or what kind of it, music uh my own music and other people's music because like a lot of times i'll be like oh man i i think i just wrote a cool song and like that'll drive me and i'll, I'll be like oh, i want to do another so stuff like that but also like other artists like like um periphery just released their new cd yeah, yeah yeah definitely it's really good and just like some of the music stuff that they're doing in that it's just like man i want to write music like i want to learn what they're doing and i want to kind of figure out like what they're doing and just i don't know stuff like that like just other artists kind of inspire me to write music but pretty much like breaking benjamin's another one i love breaking yeah. benjamin so much yeah they were definitely one of one of the bands probably about 10 years ago or so that i was super into yeah. like uh I don't know what it was about them, but they were just so catchy. Yeah. And they had, they had just like a few musical phrases they seemed to use a yeah. decent enough amount of times that made it their tagline and stuff. Yeah. And that comes down to, I think that's kind of what you're talking about, where you kind of figure out, like, what are these people doing that makes their music sound the way it does? Right. Can, can, I, can I replicate that or can I involve a little bit of that into my right. own style? Right. And that, I think that also helps help me develop kind of my own sound taking bits from every musician and stuff like that. Like I credit like Zach Wilde to be a huge influencer of how I started kind of how I sounded when I first started playing guitar. I was huge into using a wah pedal and like the crazy vibrato and the pinch harmonics and stuff like that. But as I grew up, I started to recognize other guitar players like, um, Andy James is one I'm a huge fan of right now. Um, 
and I think just learning a whole bunch of people's different styles, kind of just melding it or molding it into my own style. I think that, I don't know. Oh, yeah, totally, man. I uh, Actually, you're like one of the few people I wrote some notes for to do a podcast with because, like, believe it or not, when I started this podcast, you were one of the first people I thought of to cool. to want to be on here. Thank you. I wanted to make, I wanted to make sure I had this a little bit uh, established by the time I invited you on here. And yeah. I figured there was probably no better time than now because you just recently released a CD. Yep. Uh, your second CD, as a matter of yeah. fact. Yeah, my first full-length my first full length CD. That's awesome, man. What's the what's the name of the new CD? Time. Time. Yep. What's the what's the significance of the name? Um, it's just the whole album kind of revolves around time. Like the first song is called. It's like an intro track. It's called the beginning of time. Then uh-huh. I have a song that I wrote like two years ago called Time. And then at the end of the album, the, the last song is called The End of Time. And it's kind of like I describe the CD as like a journey. It's like traveling through time (laughs) yeah exactly um the first song it kind of gets you started like pumped up and then as the second song kicks in it's it's all high energy and then like the next song is high energy but then it slows down a bit or it slows down a bit and then uh like one of my favorite songs on the cd called the leader it slows down a bit but it still keeps that edge going as you start to get more into like time it slows down even more not still not like like ballad <laughs> yeah, but yeah it's, totally. it's, it's definitely slower and then it rises again so i think uh it it revolves around time kind of like how time works it it stops it starts it falters it slows down it just kind of yeah. that whole thing yeah definitely that's a very philosophical way to look at yeah. things that's uh i actually had the whole time concept pretty much figured out when i first wrote the song time like two years ago oh crazy so yeah. this has been this has been kind of two years in the making yeah uh, you, I guess, in that last two year time span, put out an put out an EP, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. uh, your EP is available uh, pretty much anywhere you can buy music online. Yes. I know that yep. for sure. Is is this new one available online, yes. just like everything else? Yep, it's on Spotify, iTunes, um, every pretty much every retailer you'd want to go to. It's on YouTube. You can find it anywhere. Awesome. You got physical copies. Uh, yes. At, at all your shows. Yep. Speaking of speaking of all your shows, I do have a list of your shows up here somewhere. Let me uh, pull these bad boys up. You got a show. <clears throat> excuse me. This is actually coming out on Thursday, which is to everybody that's listening. That's today, right now. Yep. yep. And uh, and you got a show at Lefties tonight. It would be yeah. you know it's yeah. So uh, if anybody's listening on the day this comes out, make sure you get to Lefties down in Des Moines. I I'm gonna do everything i can to actually be at that show i didn't realize i was gonna have some time off so that's cool i'm gonna i'm gonna swing down to that show if i can yeah and, uh, love to see you there yeah one of the things uh hold on just a second one of the things i do for a lot of the podcast people is i hand them out stickers so ah, cool. I'll, de- I'll definitely have to hook you up with some stickers yeah for sure i got um i have like a small st- um i've got i think i've got like four of them right now i'm working on a whole bunch more um, actually a series on my, um, my Facebook page and YouTube channel called, um, yeah, yeah. Roadware. Yeah. Where yeah, I explain a, all the, all the a, stickers on my guitar case and everything. So yeah, yeah. Stickers would be awesome. Dude, that's, uh, it's in my notes and, uh, I was actually watching those today. It's pretty cool. I watched yeah. the one where you, uh, peeled off your old sticker yeah. and put your yep. new logo on there, yep. which is a uh, pretty sweet man. I, yeah. I do have one of your old logos on my guitar case cause I, my guitar case is splattered with stickers, but yeah. I got to I got to get one of your new ones. So let's, nice. t- let's keep talking about merch, actually. Do you have oh, yeah. shirts and stuff? Yeah, um, I've got shirts. It's um, they're uh, kind of they're, I think I, you can call them the tattooed shirt. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, the artist. So my song on my EP called Tattooed uh-huh. was written for a very good friend of mine named Scott Schuler from uh, Scott Schuler from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh huh. And if you've ever seen him, he is tattooed. Like from top to bottom, like okay. uh, there isn't any ink that he doesn't have, except I don't think he has any on his face. But I mean, all over <laughs> his body, it's it's insane, and it's like so cool. It's, the artwork is so cool, and he actually got together with a friend of his who's a tattoo artist, and they drew up the design for the T-shirt. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually, I think I saw a uh, picture of that. Is that the cover for your album too? No, the cover for my album is me yelling at my kitchen clock. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. <laughs> 
I, I did see a, uh, on Facebook a picture circulating. I, th- I think your mom may have posted it of your kitchen clock. Yeah. Yep. That uh, was that some inspiration for this, or was it just a, a yeah. symbolic? It was type um, thing. It, I never really even thought about the clock, to be honest, mm-hmm. much until my mom brought it up. It was mm-hmm. like, man, it'd be cool if we can get that clock in the album artwork. And I was like, yeah, yeah. because it's a very, it's a very, um, it doesn't, the clock doesn't even work like at all. Yeah. It stopped working like. I don't know, five, six years ago, somewhere around there, a while ago. Uh huh. But my mom loves it so much. It's like a decorative piece that she just like she can't she can't sell it. She can't give it away. She just loves it so much. So. Oh yeah. And it's stuck at like I think it's stuck at like exactly one o'clock or somewhere around that time. Yep. So we always yep. like when whenever other family comes over, it's always a joke. Like, oh, what time is it? Oh, one o'clock. You know. <laughs> it's always just kind of a joke. Um, but yeah, and then it, it's just it's something cool. It's kind of symbolic in our family. Yes, yeah, it was really neat to actually like see that, and then yeah. uh, I didn't know that that was actually in your album artwork until I looked at it yeah. like a couple of days later, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I get, I get where yeah. this all fits together now." Yeah. So, you know, that's sort of like the fun things about uh, following what you do online. Uh, right. Like you and I are Facebook friends, but you do have a page as well that right. you share stuff from. And uh, I mean, let's take the second to recommend everybody to go to Eli Dykstra Rocks. That's uh, you're at Eli Dykstra Rocks at like what Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yeah. Yep. Do you still use Twitter? Uh, no, not really. I yeah. Like I, I tried to get on. I tried to um. I tried to get on the whole Twitter phase like when it was kind of like it was really big and it's still really big. But I'm yeah. just I'm so bad at it. It's it's just so much different than um Instagram and Facebook, but. Yeah, I'm really you, active on Instagram and Facebook. Every once in a while, I'll be on Twitter and I'll um uh, I'll check things out. I'll like some stuff and everything. I should probably yeah. I should probably just get back on Twitter again. Yeah, if if nothing else, uh, I don't know. Like on the Three Finger Betty page, what I do a lot right. is I just post you know cross post everything straight right. over to Twitter, right. and then I, I do spend time over there posting. But you right. know, it's an actual person there if uh, if it doesn't have like the Facebook link underneath right. of it or something like that. Right. So. I mean, that's one way to go about doing it, just to get more content on there. But, I mean, everybody totally does that differently. Right. So, But I do notice you are – I don't spend too much time on Instagram, but I notice you're active on Facebook. So that's that's yeah. really good if, if you want to check it out. I mean, you've got thousands of likes, man. It's uh, A few more definitely wouldn't hurt. So if you like what he's doing or if you're interested in what's going on, that's definitely a good place to find out what he's got going on. Yeah, well, and speaking, speaking of, of, speak, speak, speaking of places, places to, to find you and, and what's going, going on, on if, if you're, you're listening, listening to this a day late and it's April 19th, 19th and you're like, and you're like oh, I, I missed, missed that, that show at Lefties, drive up to Min- Minnesota right now. Go to Mankato. Go to the What's Up <laughs> Lounge. Check out Eli Rocks. Uh, the show's going to be amazing. I know yeah. it is. I've I've seen. I've been lucky enough to see you a couple times. Yeah. One time. One time actually by accident. I didn't know who you were. Yeah. I uh, just went to a show and you were there, and it was one of those like slightly mind blowing experiences where you're like. <laughs> I mean, no offense to you, and this is just the way it goes. But it's just like, what's this kid gonna do? Right. And then, right. And then, you, and then you completely blew my mind. You know. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it was good enough to to the point where I traveled to go see you again, and um, yeah. I did I did miss your CD release show at Rails and Sanborn, but a friend of mine actually went to the show. Yeah, it's and, all good. Uh, and uh, he said the place was packed. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty yeah. packed. It was a great night. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, what were the big takeaways from the night for being uh, your? Would be, I guess it'd be your first full length CD release show. Um, I played my whole my whole new CD in its entirety. Oh, that, dude! Yeah, for the first time live, and oh man, that was a blast. I mean, like, I mean, it's so much different, more diff, more different. You play it in your room or in my room, just practicing them, and it's like, man, these songs are fun to play. You know, like, eh, just kind of like uh-huh. that. But once you get on stage and like. There's lights on you. It's just like it's a whole different ballpark. It's just so much more fun and yeah, to man. have like to because it's so it's so different too. Because I never know how people are gonna react. Like oh, how are they are they gonna like a 40 minute set of just instrumentals? But people yeah. seem to enjoy it. So yeah, I was very 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 happy with um, these C release shows. Dude, I think the I think that all instrumental stuff is coming back though. Yeah, I think I think you're on the top of a. A very good wave of things doing the only instrumental tracks, and uh, <laughs> I sure you ever hope think so. about. Do you ever think about throwing <laughs> words in there? Or are you just not much yes. of a singer? Well, you, you just prefer. I mean, I, I can sing, but it's just it's just something I'd rather do with my guitar, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, oh, that um, totally makes sense. Like I, I'll have melodies. See, the reason I don't sing is because a lot of times I can't hit the notes I want to. 
which is why yeah. which is why I just played on the guitar because I'm like, man, that note would sound cool, would sound amazing vocally, but I can't hit it, and yep. I'd rather just play it. I can get that perfect note every time. So yeah, def- that's, definitely. That's kind of part of my thought process on that. But I would love to have a singer. I would love to be able to write with a vocalist because. Being a singer is a totally different ballpark. You have like a better sense of melody. I mean, like sometimes, like um, I did the band roulette thing in Sioux City, yep. and yep, I yep. yeah, I showed up with just like a demo, and it was like it was pretty rough, but I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool, and uh, worked with the rest of the band on it, and it was sound starting to sound really good, but like not not perfect. And then one day, the vocalist that we had came, and she added vocals to it, and it was just like whoa, totally different yeah. ballpark, totally different ballpark. It, it was it, the song had like just a great sense of melody now, and it was just I don't know I was I was like really blown away just how much vocals can change. But um, I part of like with my CD is like especially being instrumental is like I know that it can be very difficult to listen to a whole CD of instrumental music, like, and I I know that like as a guitar player, um, I think it's amazing. But for the average listener, I know that that can be difficult. So I, I try and write music that people who aren't musicians will still really enjoy. Oh, yeah, so definitely. That's why like all my music is very, very melody driven. And it, uh-huh. there's lot there's lots of lead lines where it's like shreddy, too. But it's yep. at, at the top or at the main focus is always melody and structure. Dude, Dude, I love, I love that, that you're keeping, keeping your head, head about you for all this, because like one of the big things I feel like a lot of people that can shred they just want to shred the whole time. Right. Like that's that's all they want to do is just right. shred, 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 which is which is cool and impressive, uh, especially to other people that play guitar or like the beginning guitarist or somebody that's right. You know, involved in that, but it it is it does kind of tend to get a little bit boring or drab right. to somebody that doesn't want to just listen to somebody shred a guitar right. all day long. Right. And I have so, so I've, right. I have total respect for people who can shred like crazy and. Like, like I wish I could shred like amazing. Oh, yeah. Like there's so many lead lines. I wish I knew I, how to do and everything, but I don't know. I just, I don't want to bore people and yeah. not saying that music, that, that music doesn't bore people. I just, I don't want to write music solely for musicians. If yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, it's the same concept as like being a comedian and not writing jokes just for other comedians. Right. Like it's, right. it's like, uh, you, you'd be able to say some things around other comedians that you might not be able to say to a general populace or like right. in a club setting. So right. this is the same concept as that. You don't want to just go out there and be like, look at the like super sick, shreddy, shreddy stuff <laughs> I got. You know, it's, uh-huh. sometimes it's better to dial it back just a notch and make it palatable for the right. general audience. Right. And totally. that's. You know, that's nothing against the general audience, but it's just something that goes through the mind of a musician. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that's very big of you at the age of 17. And and you wrote this when you were 16 and younger, you know, so that's something very big of you to to already have grasped that concept in your mind uh, at this age. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just, I've always wanted to be a, um, a huge guitar player and I still want to be a huge guitar player, but I want to see myself also as a great songwriter. Yeah. Like I don't want to show I'm, up and just be like, "Hey, I just I just wrote this killer solo, but nothing else around it." You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just so like I learning mean, song structures and stuff like that is very important to me as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier about how you had done the band roulette thing. Yeah. And you were you were talking about maybe bringing a singer in, or you think it'd be nice to have the opportunity at least to maybe right. dabble around a little bit with that. What about like a full band? You ever thought about anything like that? Oh yeah, totally. I would love to have a full band. I mean, that's like the dream right there. Yes. But just unfortunately, kind of where I live, um, it's just there's nobody my age for one, and yep. there's nobody that's. Am, like full like full on dedicated like if if I could find people that were like full on dedicated right now it'd be like hey let's go tour yeah. I just released a new CD if you guys want to play my music let's go let's tour let's let's mm-hmm. let's work on this you know and um I just I haven't found anybody around where I live that's just like totally into doing that yeah I mean, I totally get that. I'm I'm from like the Humboldt area. There's not right. a terribly high amount of people. At least right. Fort Dodge is close by for me. But right. but you're from the sticks. I mean, like you're yeah. you're from way out. Way, there's not really not too many big cities within yeah. a half an hour, forty five minutes of you. No, at all. no, closest city is Sioux City, and that's um like I think hour and ten or fifteen minutes somewhere around that. Yeah. yeah so so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
that's that's pretty wild that uh, yeah. you actually have this drive and dedication just being yourself all alone out there with nobody else to push you at all. Right. Like, is there anybody locally at all that, that kind of drives you to keep keep doing this, or is it just something that's all in your mind? Um, I'd say my parents are a big um, inspiration. As like, I always I always have drive to keep wanting to do what I do, but mm-hmm. my parents are I think are always trying to push me to keep moving forward as well. Yeah. So yeah. Like, like the support of my parents is always like very very uh, moving and very keeps me moving. Yeah, definitely. I I sat and talked to your mom at one of the shows that I'd went to, and your mom was uh, a really nice lady. Uh, she spoke really highly of you, and not just in a mom sense either. Right. You know, you right. can tell that she's uh, as a human very proud of you, right. another human. So yeah, my mom's a, not one to blow smoke up my butt. Uh, sorry, up my butt. I no. mean, like there was many. I I think I re-recorded. Well, I don't know. Um, one of the songs I think dissed is what it is. I think I, re- I re-recorded that first verse four or five times with her in the room, just because mm-hmm. she didn't think it was perfect. And I look back on it, I listen to those old demos, I'm like, they weren't perfect. But yeah. I'm like, man, I didn't want to change them at all because I thought they yeah. were perfect. But so like, yeah, having having the help of someone else or just an outside uh, listener and someone who's always determined to help me move farther is mm-hmm. is really helpful. Yeah, I mean that's that's a really cool thing. I, uh, it's not like people don't have their parents around to push them, but I feel right. like that's something that uh, you should definitely not take lightly because not everybody has that uh, good community within their own family to right. help them do the things they want to do. Uh, especially live the dream to be a guitar guy, you know. Because right. I, I feel like at the age of seventeen, you've got the, a good footing to do that for the rest of your life already. So yeah. your thank you, your parents, your parents. You're doing your parents proud, you know, and I, I definitely think that's not something you should take lightly as their support for right. sure. Right. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit about the band roulette thing. I remember seeing on Facebook or uh, YouTube there were some videos of you uh, teaming up with some other younger kids playing music. Um, you had right. maybe you had maybe traveled somewhere yep. to play some music. Yep. All right, let's let's talk about that because I'm blanking on what it was, and I'm a, the I'm a poor O'Keefe, interviewer. O'Keefe Music Foundation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that's such a cool program. Um, All right, let's talk let's talk a little bit about that because I I don't know too much about it. I remember I just saw it in passing online. So I yeah, um, the O'Keefe Music Foundation is basically um, it's I believe it's a nonprofit. Yeah, I'm pretty uh-huh. sure it's a nonprofit organization, and it is um it's just it's kind of a an outlet for kids like me who are all interested in music to experience recording, experience filming of music videos and just stuff like that. Like um, uh, the videos that are popular right now is like Raining Blood by Slayer. Yep, yep. And we did that one and just overall I think I think the O'Keefe Music Foundation has helped me grow as a player as well because yeah. And it's like, how do you give me? How do you give a Slayer solo to somebody and be like, I want you to write a melodic solo over a Slayer song? Yeah, I mean, how do you do that? (laughs) Yeah, I know. Like, how do you how do you do that? So, like, I think that that's also pushed me very far in like, in just the aspect of also being able to write music, where it's like, hey, how do I turn something that is just like that into something that sounds pretty? Because that's what he wanted. He he wanted something that what that didn't sound as chaotic. Uh And I was like, well, the whole song is chaotic. Exactly. (laughs) Part of what people love about it, and like, and that's part of what people love about it: the intensity and. It never, it never stops. It's just constantly uh-huh. like it's, and so, I think that's always kind of helps push me too. Um, but it's also a great experience to learn how to be filmed for music videos and stuff. So yeah. they they film like production quality videos of like, um, um, I don't know if you've, if you've seen the Raining Blood video, but it's filmed in a in a skate park and it's supposed to be set kind of like in the eighties. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a really cool thing, and um, but they use professional cameras and everything. They have a uh, film crew come in, and they it's just it teaches you how to, um, be able to play all your parts perfectly, because that's that's something I struggled with, and I still kind of struggle with a little bit, just because I'm a very, um, quote unquote emotional player, uh-huh. where I don't like to play things live the same at all. Like I like uh-huh. to keep it different, just because for my sanity. I don't want to ever get bored playing my songs. That makes sense. Yeah. So, yep. especially being a guitar player. So I'm mm-hmm. constantly, every night, I think, I always play the first verse and the chorus is the same. But the second verse and the choruses after that are pretty much just kind of left open. And I just, 
um, just kind of play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally get the, I totally get right. that where you say you don't right. want to play the same thing over and over and over yeah. again. It gets kind of boring. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I play in a, a punk band, and it's not like it's the same thing over and over and over right. again. But that's uh, even less variation than what you have going on. Right. So I do the same thing sometimes. Right. Where I just throw in little bits of stuff here and there. Yeah. Just to, yeah. Make it my own every right. single time. Yeah. But it's kind of nice, though, too, because if you go to one show, it's a little bit different than the next show, and it's a little bit different than the next show. Yeah. It's something that people can come back and be like, oh, that was different than last time I saw him. Uh-huh. Just always yeah. Kinda, it's, just always kind of making it spicy, quote-unquote. Unquote. Yeah, it's it's spicy. spicy. Nice. Yeah. I like, I like it. it. I like that. Uh, I, remember I remember the video, the video I had seen of you with uh, some other youngsters playing guitar was uh, you guys were in a studio, and I can't remember the song. But uh, um, it's coming down. Maybe I, I have to, uh, Yeah, I can't remember, man. I, and this is like one of those things where I should have looked this up. I looked up so much stuff about you before <laughs> before this. Because I forgot to look that up, and I thought about it on the fly. So that's fine. I was trying um, to. It. The pot by Tool. That one. That might have been the one. I, yeah, yeah, that sounds more familiar. <clears throat> yeah, there was a there was a female, like yep. a, a girl that was singing it. Yep. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, so you've made a few of these videos then. Yeah, yeah, I've made quite a few. Um, I think I, I think I've, I did one remotely from my house. I recorded it and I sent it to him. Um, but I don't even know exactly how many OK videos I've, I'm, I've done. I'm gonna be doing a lot this um in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm gonna be doing like five videos. Um. Oh, cool. And, yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's just pretty exciting. It's That's it's just it's such a fun process and everything and. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't where's know. <laughs> Where's the uh, O'Keefe Foundation, or what was the name of it? The o- O'Keefe Music Foundation. Yeah, where's that located at? Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati. How'd you get uh, in touch with them? Actually, um, I don't. Have you ever seen the Forty Six and Two video? The kids cover Forty Six uh, and Two. No, I don't think I have. But uh, um, I think that was another just tool. Hit, another yeah. tool song, though. I think that one just yeah. hit forty three million views. It, oh jeez! That, that one went like extremely viral. I wasn't in that one, but I believe I believe I, believe I, may, I may have seen, seen that actually. Now that you mentioned yeah. it's that popular, I want to write, write it down. down. But yeah, yeah. But um, I remember seeing that video and I was like, man, these are all kids doing this, and I was like, I really yeah. want to do this. Excuse me. No, that's cool. And um, my, I think my mom got in contact with them over email. She did some research, found out um, Aaron Aaron O'Keefe's name. Uh, his email, all that stuff, and she just sent him an email, sending him a video. I think of, I think it was on my cover of Adele of Adele's song "Hello." Okay. And uh, I think it took like two weeks for him to respond. And by that point, after two weeks, we thought, not gonna get a response. Like, eh, we'll just, you know, he's probably so busy. And uh, we got a response, and he was like, "Hey, I'm offering you um, uh, to play the pot by Tool." And I was like, mm-hmm. "No way! Like, that's the coolest thing ever." Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, gotta go and, and like that was probably my first experience recording in a um, a more professional setting. I I'd yeah. never recorded anything except for in my room. Yeah. So being able to go there and learn how to, in a sense, be kind of produced. If that makes uh-huh. any sense. Go yeah. and um, learn if he's like, hey, I need you um, just do this instead of this. Learn how uh-huh. to be able to do that on the fly, just like that. So oh, yeah, I, I think yeah. that was just all that was a great experience and good learning thing. And like I said earlier about like when I do my live shows, I, I play everything differently every time. Well, this had to teach yep, me yep. or I had to teach myself how to play it perfectly every time because you uh-huh. couldn't have different uh-huh. takes every time. So that's, I think that was definitely a good learning experience there, too. Yeah, that's really yeah, cool. That's really cool. I, uh, I, uh, I, I think I, now, I that, think you now that you mentioned that, that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a guy that does he, that, does he also have does he do lessons, he do there, lessons or there or what's? what's yeah. I want to say I remember, I remember it was, it was, it started, it started out as a guy that did lessons, lessons and he wanted to give uh, younger, people people younger people an opportunity to see what it was like to record music and things like that. Yeah, and and that that was how it started. Am I right? I believe something along something along those lines. But man, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, now, now that you, you mentioned that, that that's, that's that's crazy, crazy cool that you're involved in that. And uh, yeah. I mean, that's 
That's really that's neat. I mean, really neat. you just, you turned, just 17. turned 17. You've been involved in some stuff like that. Stuff that's, like that. uh, you're yeah. getting a lot of opportunities and rightfully so. And rightfully so. I mean, I mean I, thank you. if anybody I, is, anybody like, is like, I want to come back to this. If anybody's listening for the first time ever, I, I definitely have to say, if you don't know who Eli Dykstra is, you're going to know soon because, uh, you're going to blow up, man. I know you are. Like you're the next big thing from Iowa. So if you, if you don't know what it is, check it out. You can check it out on, uh, Spotify. Google, Google Play, Play uh, iTunes, uh, iTunes uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube, literally, YouTube, literally anywhere you listen to music. music. Yeah, uh, you, uh, can you can buy bu- you can buy it uh, from, from from him at a show. show. Uh, you right. can actually meet Eli, Eli at a show. show. That's, another That's another thing. thing. It's, it's not like. like it's not like any of this, like uh, any of this uh, talent uh, and. Talent and uh, uh, the, the, the credit, the credit that, you're that you're receiving for some of this, some of this. It's, it's not like any of this like is going, going over your head. head. You're still a very, still personable, a very personable, personable person. person. I've talked I've to you, talked uh, you uh, one, time one time in person, in person uh, uh, at, a at a show actually, show actually in Algona, 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 in Algona at Lifers. Yep, Lifers. Might have Yep, I believe it was Lifers at the time. But yeah, I mean... I, I, it's not like I'm like blown away by how down to earth you are, but you're such a down to earth person, and it, it just makes me so it makes me so happy to know that uh, this hasn't all gone to your head. You know, it's, I, I definitely <laughs> didn't have my head screwed on as well as you did uh, at your age. Let me put it that way. Uh, I I don't know. It's kind of mind blowing. It's pretty, it's pretty nice to. It's refreshing. Let's put it that way. Like I, yeah. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just kind of turned into me turned just into telling me Eli just how awesome Eli he is awesome for about <laughs> two or three <laughs> minutes, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Do I, uh, do I, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely though. though. It's, 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 it's very, it's deserving. very All deserving. All the stuff All that you've, stuff that you've, you've achieved, achieved so far so and the, the credit, credit that you've received, received is definitely, definitely, definitely very well deserved. Uh, I, 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 I believe I've heard something online here or there about you with a custom guitar. Is this correct? Yeah. correct? yeah. All right. All right. You want to right. talk, talk a little, little bit about, little about, about that, that bad boy? boy? So, um, it was actually a, um, I think it was like a really, I think it was one of those like really beginner Epiphone guitars. Uh huh. And, um, boy, I think that it's been a project that was like three years in the making. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of what happened was somebody, uh, a good friend of mine named Scott Carsonson, mm-hmm. uh, bought it, but he, told me it was for somebody else and that mm-hmm. he was actually for me mm-hmm. but what happened was um he wanted my dad who's an artist to paint it for me but it was yeah, kind of yeah. like well, how am i supposed to figure out what eli would want without him knowing so yeah, yeah, exactly he he told me that this guitar was um was supposed to be for me and mm-hmm. um i was just like whoa like that's cool that's so cool and um, I kind of designed it like I don't know if you've, seen, uh, you've I know you've probably seen my guitars. It's all got the stripe on yep, it, yep. just the single yep, stripe. Yep. And I was like, yep, that's yep. kind of my signature thing. That was like right at the time when I started doing the stripe. And I was like, I looked up cool cars on the internet, and a yeah. black a black and red Lamborghini came up, like a black uh-huh. uh, matte black Lamborghini with a red accent um, came uh-huh. up, and I was like, that is cool. Like I want black and red, so yeah, we dude. decided to go for that. And uh, it's a really simple setup, and it's just um, it's outlined in black um, with a red stripe. But we wore away the stripe to make it look more like it's been through war. And uh-huh. I, I call it the war machine. <laughs> uh-huh. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, uh, I, uh, I dig, I dig the, the single line across it. Across it. Uh, the uh, first thing first I thought thing of actually was car. Was car. And yeah. uh, I, yeah. mean, there's I mean, there's, there's been a, there's, there's been a few guitar companies, guitar companies, companies who have dabbled, dabbled with either car, car colors, colors or car mm-hmm. designs, mm-hmm. Uh, just uh, a just tiny, tiny, tiny bit. bit. A, lot yeah. a lot of times they, they like to try, like to try and angle, angle them a little, little differently, or, yeah. or, or put the or double stripe down them or something. But but yours is unique, man. I've never seen one with a slightly offset single stripe, you know. And it's a it's horizontal, which a lot of times if you see the stripe, it's diagonal for some reason. So so it definitely stands out. I I enjoy that you've got. A signature, signature look, look to what to you've got, got going, going on. It's, yeah. It's, Thank you. It, it, it actually, just, I'm sorry. Go, go for it, man. It. Oh, it actually kind of made me mad when I first, I first started doing the um, the stripe because I got my uh, a yellow gunslinger right there. Um, uh-huh. uh-huh. And I was a huge BC Rich player. And I, yeah. I still yeah. play um, my white ASM Pro like all the time. It's yep. like my yep. favorite guitar, but... I got that yellow guitar and I was like, I wanted an Eddie Van Halen guitar. That's what I wanted. Uh, yep, so yep. Uh, it was a yellow guitar and the plan was I was going to put tape all over it and like hit his, his in his design and paint it black and then peel off the tape. Yep. And you yep. would have the black with the yellow stripes. 
Uh-huh. And that was my original plan. But then I was like, I was looking at it and I was like, yellow with the black stripes is kind of cool too. And then eventually yeah. it was just like, man, this is too much tape. And I peeled it all off until it was, there was two uh, pieces of tape on both sides. And I was uh-huh. like, I don't really like that. I just took off one of them and I was like, that's it. That's perfect. Maybe, that's that's cool. cool. Yeah, and as as soon as I did that, I think like a week later, ESP announced um, James Het- James Hetfield's signature model, which has the stripe on it, just like that. And I was like, are what? you kidding me? Yeah. Uh, no, way. <laughs> no way. I was like, are you kidding oh. me? And I was like, ugh. I know. I was, that um, sucks. <laughs> it does a little bit, but eh, it was cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is what it is, though. It is, though. Yeah, I, yeah mean, I, would I, mean, I would too. I'd rock too. it. I'd rock it. It's one of those I thought, things. I thought it'd be a where... thing. I thought it'd be a thing that would like die. That I would like be like, oh, that's stupid. Take it off the guitar after like a year or something. But I still like it. I still do it to all my guitars. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. So, so is that, that literally, literally just, just a piece of tape, of tape on them, or do you? Yeah. Uh, um, really? Yeah. Um, electrical tape. No way. I I, I actually, actually thought, thought they were like custom made, like with that in the paint and everything. That's so wicked. Nope. Oh man. Yeah. Um. I. Um. I think I think they're no, they might not be all electrical tape anymore. When I first started doing it, it was all black electrical tape. But yep, then yep. eventually, my my dad works at a um, auto body uh, shop where they also make stickers and stuff. So we oh, asked nice. for um, a matte black sticker and uh-huh. a white sticker. So I have the white sticker on my uh, my black LTD seven string and oh, the black cool. sticker on my white guitar. So it's kind of like a I always describe the guitars as like an angel and devil thing. They're the exact yep. opposites. One's like yeah. a super heavy, mean sounding guitar. It's black. Uh-huh. It's got the white stripe. Then the other one's like a pretty six string, you know, yep. uh, like warm sounding guitar with um, uh, the black stripe. Yeah, yeah. So you got a, a six, six and a seven, seven string. Then. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah what, what's what's uh, uh? You started on six, six I'm seven. assuming. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and then moved to seven. What was the desire to go to seven? Just needed more strings to rip on, or you wanted you wanted to go a little bit lower and didn't just want to down tune a six string or what? No, um, I think kind of what happened was is I noticed that all music, or not all of it, but a lot of music was kind of heading in that direction, uh-huh. where it was all kind of hitting the drop B, drop um, yep. A, you know, drop mm-hmm. G. Now G is pretty popular right now, but it was like. I, I want to be able to write. It goes back to the I want to be able to write music like these people, and I mm-hmm. think I blame I blame Dead Horse Trauma entirely for getting me into the seven <laughs> strings. I was waiting for them to come up. up. <laughs> yep, I, I blame them entirely for the seven strings because um they have baritone guitars all tuned to A. Yep. And I was like, man, that sounds gnarly. I was like, I, yeah. I, I need that sound, and they let me play one of their guitars on stage for the, one of their sound checks, and I was like, God, it just sounds so like gritty and perfect. Uh-huh. And I was just like, I need it. So that was kind of the desire to go to seven string and open up the boundaries more to my writing. So like, because I don't like to play other tunings outside of standard tuning, just because uh-huh. I like to have a, a longer range. So I like yep. to hit really high notes. So mm-hmm. it was an easy way for me to still get those high notes without having to tune down the whole guitar. Yeah, it totally makes sense. I mean. Uh... The I get, I get the, the gist, gist of what, what you're going, going for. for. I right. mean, maybe maybe, uh, maybe other, other people, people who are not musicians might not quite understand what's going on. But right. I'm picking I'm up what you're putting down. down. Uh, instead, <laughs> instead of instead, instead of lowering, lowering every single, single string, string uh, you're, you're adding, adding uh, one, one extra string, string that's yep. lower. So so now that's lower. Yep. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it totally, totally makes sense. sense. I get it. I just want to use the full spectrum. Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree, agree with, with uh, a, lot a lot of music's kind of going towards that lower tuning mm-hmm. uh, thing, and I'm I'm not opposed to it. I was like pretty much bread. My bread and butter is standard. Everything's yeah. standard. I'm yeah. a little bit more of a blues guy, so maybe I'll go uh, E flat at lowest. You know, but but, but I do I have a couple guitars, guitars that are tuned to D. I play in in Unity, and we just down tune everything to D standard right. and call right. that good. But yeah, I. I do, I do have, have one guitar, guitar lingering around here that's in C, but I don't have any seven strings. I've never, I never really dabbled too much in it, and I don't know why. But uh, I think having an extra, ex- yeah, having that extra having string extra might be the way to go. Way to what go. about eight what string? About eight you ever think about adding another, another one, one, or do you think it's just at that point, that point it's just getting it's too just much? Getting too much. I think at that point you're just getting too much, and yeah. I'm yeah. not, I'm not dissing any eight, eight string guitar players because there's some wicked ones. I think, oh yeah, I think Toast Nabasi uses nine. Or you might well, use, uh, yeah, he might dude. It's eight or nine somewhere around that. That guy's just a wicked guitar player. Both yeah. him and yeah. Javier are just amazing guitar players. 
But I think you get to a point where it's just it's too low. I mean, like sometimes you'll be listening to like the music and like on your phone or something, and you can't even hear those notes through your phone yeah. speakers yeah. or through exactly. your computer speakers. It's just that uh-huh. low. Which I mean, like uh-huh. if you're listening through good speakers, it sounds brutal and it's awesome. But yeah. I don't know. It's a it's a whole range of music I haven't even experienced yet, or I haven't um, experimented with yet, and. I think that if I ever got to a point where I wanted to try an eight string, I would just turn on my drop tune pedal and just drop it down a couple of steps. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, makes total, makes sense, total sense there, there too. too. I uh, just, just you, let, let a let a pedal, pedal let a little bit of hardware, hardware do the work for yes. you instead of instead yeah. of buying a whole new instrument. Yeah, uh, that, that I mean that, that comes, comes back, back to people, people that might not play music, music that are listening to this. That's that's a nice that's like a cheating to win, but you're not cheating. You know, you're you're using. The digital, digital stuff, stuff to let it let like you do the work you need to do. Right. I I've, I've, I've never, never even wanted to attempt, attempt playing, playing an eight string guitar. guitar. Like, like it's, it's I don't know. It's, it's, it's scary. I'll, 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 I'll wait, wait till, till I get, get to seven to get to eight. eight. And, yeah. and, and you're, you're very, very correct in the fact of saying like this is not a dissing on eight string guitar players thing because almost if you play an eight string, there's probably a reason you play an eight string because six strings is not enough to contain how how much you can shred. You know. Right. And especially yeah, with like animals as leaders, I know they're doing a lot of bass lines on those eight strings. Yeah, yeah. And they're so like, like t- t- tapping, tapping their way, way through, through it yeah. too. Yeah, and, yeah which uh, I mean, it's like really cool. I just personally, I'm not a good enough guitar player to be able to do that, and I don't really no, want to yeah. get. I don't want to get an eight string if I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean I, f- I, feel I feel like that's, like that's some, some of the territory. territory. There's, There's a little, little bit of music that's, that's kind of going that direction now. now. Like, like uh, uh, I, don't I don't know if you're familiar with Scale the Summit. Maybe yeah, that's another band. band. Yeah. Okay, so, so like, uh, they're, they're another band, band that, that they, they don't, don't spend a whole lot of time strumming the guitar. Right. They use it. They use. They use, uh, they use the, the fretboard as something to just tap across, across a lot of times. Yes. And, uh, uh, I mean, that, that seems to be a way a lot of people, people with extra, extra strings kind of tend to go. Do you see yourself bringing any of that style into what you're doing? Um, I could, but like I said earlier, I don't want to write music for, um, musicians. I want to write music that everyone can relate to. And um, I love that music so much. Like, uh, like it's some I listen to it all the time, and I think I'm more listen to it to make me want to be a better guitar player. <laughs> yeah. I'll hear it, and I'll hear like Toast and the Bossy, and I'll just be like, God, I need to practice. Or oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like uh, and it like it almost makes me like angry and like ah, uh, I just need to go home and I need to get behind the guitar and I need to practice. Uh-huh. But at, at the core of it, I just want to write good songs. So yep. I like I like. Uh, some of my favorite things is like when you when you have a chord progression and mm-hmm. you just you start playing it. And it's like man, that's a pretty cool chord progression. I'm gonna I'm gonna record it, see what happens. But then you start doing a melody over top of it or just jamming over top of it, and like you hit that sweet note like right with the chord progression, or yep. you'll, you'll hit like an octave chord, and it's uh-huh. um, uh it's like my favorite thing ever. And then it, it's like where it's like man, that's just a, it's a catchy thing. I don't I don't think you need anything more there. So yeah, def- I, I definitely. could definitely see my music getting into that realm, uh-huh. but as of now, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah I mean, mean you, it, 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 comes it comes right, right back, back to like what you said. It's being palatable, palatable to it, like a general audience. audience. Uh, right. If, if, if somebody, somebody was, was just, just like, like, "Hey, I like, I like ACDC, 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 recommend, recommend me a band," band. you're, you're not, not gonna, gonna say, say "Here's Scale the Summit," "Here's Here's Animals as Leaders." Yeah. You know, they'll they'll be like, "Whoa, what is this?" You know, that's like some. I can't comprehend a C major add nine eleven. Yeah, yeah, no, no kidding. kidding. That's, That's like, like somebody, somebody being like, like I, I like burgers like and fries, fries, and you're like, like all right, well, here's like, like tuna, tuna salad or something. something. It's yeah. completely yeah. different, you know? Yeah. Or, you know, so I, 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 I totally, totally get where you're coming from. from. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's talk, talk just, just a little, little bit about the Dead Horse Trauma guys. Yeah. How did you how did you run into them? Um. Uh. So kind of how it started was they were coming to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is uh closer to where I live. It's still like an hour and ten minutes away. Sorry, no, not Sioux Falls. It was Harrisburg at the Phoenix Lounge. Okay. And um, we had a bunch of posters for um, Loco Fest. Okay. Which was happening in Algona. All right. And um, we decided that we were going to go um, go there, meet these guys, never heard of them, heard like one of their songs. I think it was Psycho at the uh-huh. time. It was being played on um, Z98 Underground. Nice. And nice. it was like, it's a pretty cool song. Uh, well, they're going to be in town, see if we can get in the bar. Maybe I can meet them. We can hang up a poster. Mm-hmm. So we get there and... Um, I remember this like it's yesterday because I knew exactly what Eric Davidson looked like. Um, uh-huh. Like, do crazy long dreads. You know, he's kind of always just oh, like, yeah. oh, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? you know, like, he's yeah. always like, he's got his mindset. He's always like thinking about oh, yeah. other things. 
it's crazy. Um, but I always feel like um, telling the story now, it's funny. But at the time, I was so embarrassed because my dad didn't know what he looked like. And he, and he went up right to Eric and he shook his hand. He goes, you know where Eric Davidson is? And I was like, Dad, he's you're talking to him. <laughs> and I, I remember that exactly. And I was like, man, this is the first time I'm ever going to meet Del Rose Trauma. And, um, but yeah, after that, they, like I bought a t-shirt. They were the coolest guys ever. They, um, yeah. I got a photo with them. I got to see him perform, and it was it was honestly life changing seeing them perform. Just because it was like a band from Iowa that is yep. isn't huge, but is on the on the edge of some of becoming something that could blow up. Oh and yeah! It was just like seeing that and hearing the music, and it was good music, good music yep. from Iowa, and it was just like wow. And I just yeah. after that, I felt so determined to push myself even more and get to know them more and i think the next time they the next time i saw them they came to sioux falls and i got to play not even on the stage i got to play on this on um on the floor next to their merch booth that's That's cool cool. excuse me that's 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 sweet sweet. i uh a couple couple of times times in the the podcast podcast, it's come up that other other local local musicians musicians have actually been the cause uh the causal or like the focal point, I guess, to be uh, drivers for other local uh-huh. musicians. Uh-huh. And this is definitely one of those situations. Totally. And, and uh, I mean, it's well, we might be overstepping our bounds a little bit, calling Dead Horse Trauma just a local band at this point. Yeah, because, for sure. Because, uh, like you explained, Dead Horse Trauma might not be a household name, but if you take a household name band and they go on tour, uh, Dead Horse Trauma would be one of the bands opening up for them. You know, they're, 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 they tour with the touring bands. They uh, go to big shows and big places and play, uh, you know, damn your headlining gigs at some places. I mean, they're they're well worth it. I've seen them a handful of times. I've seen them with like uh, other bands opening up for them, and I've I've enjoyed a lot of a lot of what I've seen. They're high energy. Yeah. They uh, I've I've borrowed a little bit of what they have going on. They have. Uh, Used to use uh, stage boxes and light boxes, yep, yep, and I yep. and I uh, you know borrowed that idea and made my own style of light box from that. Yeah. So if anybody goes to a Betty show and sees the light boxes, that's a huge tip of the cap to the Dead Horse Trauma guys because yeah. I saw them doing it first. So I and, mean, yeah, yeah, and they're just they're all geniuses when it comes to marketing and everything. Like Eric Eric Davidson has just got he's just such a he has such a great mind for promotion and promoting his own band and everything. I mean, like yes. the whole war paint thing. It, yep. I mean, it started as being just a cool thing to set them apart from everyone else, uh-huh. but it turned into something that now um, fans come and they're like, "Oh, I want war paint. Can I get war paint?" And they'll war paint mm-hmm. your face, and it it sends home the signal of like what they're always trying to send the message of is family, like yep. dead horse trauma family. Everyone yep. is a part of something, mm-hmm. and I th- always thought that was really cool. And they're just such great, humble people. Yeah, that was another thing. I I talked to a handful of them um, just on a whim. It's not like I knew any of them or I I needed to go bother. I hate bothering people at shows, especially if they're going to be playing. Yeah. I mean, you probably understand because you're a musician too, but it's just one of those deals where I I saw them. I was like, hey, guys, you know, like, you know, thanks for coming. I believe I saw them at Fort Dodge one time. Uh They were pretty close to where I live. So it's just really cool that, uh, you know, they're humble, humble, just as humble as everybody else. You know, it's not right. like they're it's not like they're out there just like I'm super cool. Don't talk to me. Yeah. I'll be in my trailer. They're not those kind of guys. No. It's not like there's a ton of those guys out there. No. But uh, you know, it's it's pretty crazy actually. Most I will have to say, um, almost every musician I've met is is actually pretty humble about what they're doing uh, right. for the for the most part. Which is actually something that speaks volumes, considering most of us want to get on a stage and it, you know entertain people. Right. But at the same time, we're all sort of uh, antisocial somewhat at the same yeah. sense. Yeah. So we're dealing with complex individuals here. And yeah. uh, uh, another thing I kind of wanted to talk to a little bit about was uh, the regional rock hour. You were on the regional yeah. rock hour last yeah. week, were you not? Yes, I was. Yeah. yeah. So that's actually right up near my neck of the woods. That's in Fort Dodge. It's on a radio station. I can get in my hometown, 92.1. Yeah. And it's... it's uh, The Eagle, right? Ra- the Eagle, that's yep. right. Yep. yep, that's uh Mason on yeah. air. Yeah, such a great wanna... dude too. Yeah, he's he's, he's really, really nice. nice. I was I was lucky enough to actually go and uh, talk about a guitar I had built and donated to a school uh, the week before you, and then I was like, oh, Eli's gonna be on next week. This yes. is awesome. awesome. 
And so he's like, yeah, we're going to be playing some of Eli's new tunes. And I said, shut up. Yeah. So after we went off air, I got to sample a couple of your new songs. I can't wait to, I haven't listened to your CD yet, but I'm going to definitely stream it tonight and hopefully purchase a copy of it from you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's been one of the things I started doing. I, I took a that from a buddy of mine. His name's uh, Sean Oaks. I did a podcast with him a while back, uh-huh. but he was one of those guys that was just like, why don't you go out and actually buy the merch from the person and then you won't, you won't feel guilty about streaming it because you already paid the person the money for the, for the, for the, for the work, you know? Right. And uh, you were actually the very first person I practiced that on. I like when it, saw you in life first and, and, and bought your stuff and I was like yeah you know what this does feel really good about me actually being yeah. able to, to stream this now that I actually paid the money for it yeah you know? thank you because what are you because what are you getting like you know an 18th of half of a quarter of a penny or something you know like I don't it's it's, it's almost nothing so yeah. and as well I, yeah I follow I pretty much follow that same principle as well like um I pretty much only listen to people on Spotify if I own their music I mean yeah. if, every once in a while like if it's a new song that just came out like yeah. I'll I'll stream it because it's just like I want to hear this song. But mm-hmm. for the most part, if I'm ever listening to a full album, it's it like it's kind of my rule is kind of like I have to own it. Yeah, and, and I mean, even it makes... if it even if it's buying it on iTunes or anything, I mean uh-huh. streaming streaming is super convenient for when you're on like when you're traveling in cars and everything. I mean yeah. it really is, and and that's part of why I love Spotify. It's easy to have in school. And God, I wish I wish computers still had uh, CD drives and USB ports and all that stuff. Cause uh-huh. I, I'm like, it's funny because I'm I'm only 17, but I'm old school when it comes to that. I love having a physical copy of a CD. Yes, yes, yes and, exactly. So that's kind of like my whole thing, where it's so inconvenient to have a CD now, even though I want to have them. Mm-hmm. So I only really listen to I do the same thing you do. Yeah, and that's, and that's, that's, that's that is what's, what's really tough, tough about that, though. Like you were saying, like, like I went out and bought a CD. I don't remember. Like, uh, your CD, actually, this is a really funny story. Your CD ended up staying in my car because it has a CD changer. Yeah. And I would just, I just go in there and turn it on. And, uh, I didn't, the auxiliary port was broken. So I had to listen to CDs or the radio. So your CD, like literally just sat in there and played on loop hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. So your EP, so your EP is like melted into my brain forever. Like that's awesome. Thank you. It's, it's, it's hilarious. Uh, we were actually on the regional rock hour a couple of weeks. Uh, weeks ago me and mason and he starts yeah. playing some of your stuff and i was like wait i know this what yeah. is this song and he's like this is eli i'm like oh gosh that's why this sounds so familiar i thought this was like a popular song that everybody knew thank you because because that's how many times i've heard it thank you so uh yeah I, I really dig that what's that you have a favorite on it oh god I'd, I'd have to look because i don't know if i even have the liner notes for right. the cd anymore i just put it in there and hit play right. and I, that's totally fine I'm, I'm bad at remembering song names oh i am too uh, i am too know, i'm so bad at remembering song names no you're totally yeah. fine i was just curious <laughs> that's always like my least favorite question to get when meeting a musician like what's your favorite oh, I'm sorry. song and it's, and it's just it's just tough like i remember meeting a couple of musicians like uh I went and met Rich Ward once, and he plays guitar yeah. on Fozzy. And he's like, what's your favorite song on the new album? And I was just like, buh. Yeah. I don't know. Like, is it the fourth one? I think yeah, it's the fourth. You know, and it's yeah. like, that's the yeah. dumb. It sounds so dumb. And it's like, oh, you aren't a real fan, are you? Yeah, I, yeah exactly. I, ran, I ran into that too. Sorry. I, <laughs> no, no, it's totally cool. He he knew I was a real fan when I showed up with, like, 16 of his albums. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. But, but either way, hey, uh. Uh, we're, getting we're getting pretty close pretty to recording cool. a full hour here, oh, and I just want to say, like, thank, like, you, thank so you so much for, for taking some taking time, time out of your day, day and, uh, and doing and the do podcast, podcast with me and, and working with me, even though our distance between us is uh, so, kind of yeah. created yeah. an issue. But I wanted, but I wanted to, make to make sure to get, sure to get a podcast, podcast with you near the time of your CD release. And, you know, I feel like we nailed it. We're only a week late. so Yeah, for sure. And you're still doing shows. You're still going to school. I mean, you're balancing your life really well. Luckily, tomorrow I get out at, at like, um, I think it's 1 o'clock because uh, of Easter break. So oh, then nice. no school Friday. So, like, these shows are, it's, like, perfect timing. All right. Um, yeah. So, so I just, uh, just, uh, just want to say, say thanks. thanks. Hey, there you go. That's episode number 31. Yeah, there were a few times there where the audio may not have synced up the best due to some of the lag from being on the phone over the internet and uh yeah some of that's my fault we probably should have just done an actual phone call and uh 
Yeah, that's just poor planning on my part. I uh, couldn't get a guest this week. I had a lot of issues with uh, meeting up with people. I got stood up by one person, which is kind of a weird thing. But uh, a couple other people, we just had issues uh, finding free time. And, uh, you know, that's what happens. And I figured, you know what? If, I, if I'm if i going to have to do an internet podcast with, with somebody, uh, it's going to be Eli Dykstra. I, I've enjoyed what he's been doing over the years. He's um, an amazing guitarist. He's a great guy, you know. Uh, he's, he's a brilliant young man uh, doing doing lots of cool things. Uh, he's playing music, uh, great music at that. He plays uh, all the instruments uh, on all the music that he has, which which is insanity. It's it's just crazy, is it not? I mean, there are a lot of multi instrumentalists out there, but but he. I mean, this is taking it to the next level. Um, you know. You know, it kind of reminds me of, I, I feel like if some booker really wanted to, they should put Eli Dykstra and Transig on the same show. Uh, I understand Transig Live is a little bit different than Transig in the studio, but hey, you know what? That That's some pretty killer stuff. You know, that'd be a, that'd be a great show. I'd pay money to go see that. I'll tell you what, I'd pay money to go see that. So, uh, you know what? If you want to pay money to go see something, pay some money to go see Eli Dykstra Live. You know, he's, uh, let's see here. We discussed his shows just a little bit ago, and I had them on my Facebook page, but for some reason, it's not here anymore. Uh, he's got a show tonight. It's uh, at Lefties, and he's got a show tomorrow night. Uh, it's in Mankato, uh, exactly where the show in Mankato is. I'm not 100% sure, and I'm very sorry for that. Um, well, here we go. It's at the What's Up Lounge. Oh, cool. The What's Up Lounge in Mankato, Minnesota, April 19th. That's tomorrow night uh, if you're listening to this the day it came out. But uh, it's April 19th at the What's Up Lounge in Mankato, Minnesota. Otherwise, it's uh, April 18th at Lefty's Live Music uh, in Des Moines, Iowa. And I'm going to try and hit up that Lefty's show, which is tonight if you're listening to the day that this comes out. Uh, so yeah, if you want to go check out Eli and then come say hi to me at the show, uh, I'm going to be there with a whole pile of stickers in hand, ready to talk to some people and, uh, give Eli a huge high five for the, doing a podcast with me this week. Uh, you know, huge shout out to Eli once again, just for coming through clutch and, uh, just having a phone call with me and you know it, it's just great stuff to be able to do that kind of stuff with people online that you've never actually met but uh i want to support him and what he's doing and his new album that's coming out I, I can't wait to go buy a copy of it it's gonna be great and uh you know you can go check out audible farm anywhere you want to online by going to www.audiblefarm.com there are links to everything on there uh, where you can listen to us, where you can find us, where you can subscribe, where you can like, share, tweet, everything. If you're uh, old school and you don't want to go to www.audiblefarm.com, you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and follow us on Instagram at Audible Farm for all of those. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. There are podcasts on there as well as uh, bi- videos from local bands playing shows around the Des Moines area. Uh, there's more on there. I recently dipped a guitar for the Iowa Central Accounting Club, and uh, we raised quite a bit of money for that. I, we raffled it off. It was a great time. Uh, there's a video on there for that. It's really neat. You should check that out. If you want to send me an email, you can send me an email to audiblefarm at gmail.com. Otherwise, you can go to www.audiblefarm.com, and there's a form there. And if you fill the form out, it sends me uh, a little email so you can tell me uh, who you are and what you got going on. Maybe you can be a guest on the podcast if we can make something work. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing another uh, podcast via the phone. But, uh, you know, Eli and I had actually discussed how we may need to get some audio difficulties worked out. And along those lines, I feel like I should uh, bring Eli back for a redemption episode because, you know what, he deserves it. So uh, that's just how I feel about that. Once again, sorry for the audio. It's just kind of the way it is. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out once again to Eli Dykstra. Make sure you go leave us a review online. Um, Whatever your favorite streaming podcast service is, I'm sure they have a rating system somehow. Uh, I, you know, go there and leave us five stars and give us the thumbs up or, you know, the winky faces and the pokes and all the good stuff. So go do all that stuff. And, uh, you know, who else you should support is the Iowa Podcast Network. 
Go to Iowa Podcast Network to find more podcasts like this one. Well, maybe not 100% like this one. There actually is one out there that I hear I see. It's a great podcast about uh, music in the Iowa City area, and there is actually music on the podcast. So if you want to listen to music on the podcast, it's a, it's a great one to listen to. So you can go, and uh, Justin Comer is a great guy. He's got lots of cool stuff going on. So check out his podcast. You can find all sorts of other podcasts on the Iowa Podcast Network at iowapodcastnetwork.com. So uh, thanks again to Eli. Thanks again for everybody for listening. I really appreciate you guys uh, listening to this one. This was you know, last minute deal. I got it in under the wire. Uh, you know, once again, huge, you know, big ups to Eli Dykstra for helping me out on this one. So uh, shout out to everybody for listening. Uh, I'll be back next week with another podcast. Uh, come hell or high water. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next time. Peace.